For me and many others, Mac computers have always been the high-end, the more professional way of working creatively. After 10 years of professional video editing on Mac computers, I'm switching back to PC. Also, subscribe to the channel, like and leave a comment below for a chance to win my custom created light leak overlays pack. All right, so I'm used to Mac. I love the operating system. Everything just seems to make sense. But as I started to work with 4K footage, LUT files, and more demanding codecs like H.265, my editing time has slowed drastically because my computer simply cannot keep up. Yes, I could have bought probably a newer MacBook Pro, but I need something that's a little more future-proof, something that I can upgrade in the future. We actually sourced all of the parts and realized that we could buy two PCs for the price of one Mac. So that's exactly what we did. We custom built two PCs for the price of one higher-end Mac. After a bunch of research, I managed to change quite a few things on the Windows 10 operating system to make it much more similar to how Mac operates. I used an open source program called Auto Hotkeys, which allows you to remap all the keys on a keyboard to whatever you'd like. I'm no coding expert, but I was able to get it to work the way I wanted. So now with my Mac keyboard on Windows 10, I can still do Command C, Command V, Command H to hide and show the desktop. I can Command Tab through programs. I can use the volume controls. I can use the media controls to skip through songs. This was probably the biggest contributor to making my switch from Mac to PC as easy as it could be. Second to that, I've added the ability to press spacebar to preview selected files and also the ability to press command shift 4 to take a screenshot of a selected area that auto saves a PNG to the desktop. And that's great because on the Mac I used to use that feature all the time. By the way, if any of you are interested in any of the parts that I'm specifically buying, I'll list them in the description down below so you can check those out. If you are looking to build a custom PC, make sure all the parts are compatible because when you just go into a computer shop and buy a fully finished computer, that's very different from ordering 12 different PC parts because they all have different manufacturers, they all work with different computer parts, so make sure the pieces are compatible with each other. All right, so let's dive into the individual computer parts. The first piece we bought was the computer case. We went with the Fractal Design ATX mid tower case. It has a lot of room inside and it also has great ventilation, which is very important. I really like the design of this case because one of the sides features a see-through plastic cover where you can see all the lights that are flashing and turning on as the computer's running and that creates a really cool look to the computer. Next was the motherboard. We bought the MSI X299 Raider Pro Series motherboard. It has a ton of options for connectivity like all the ports it has, but it also features modern connections where you can connect an M.2 SSD directly to the motherboard. For the CPU, there were a lot of choices like going with a higher end Intel, deciding to go with a lower end Intel but a better graphics card, or by switching to an AMD Threadripper, for example, which has great reviews. So it was a challenge to decide on which one we wanted, but we ended up going with the Intel i9-7920X. It's a super powerful 12-core, 24-thread CPU that, when overclocked, can get speeds of 4 gigahertz or faster. So with that being said, we bought one of the best air coolers you can get, which is a Noctua NHD15 Premium Cooler. This was connected directly to the CPU with a special putty that allows the heat to be transferred up past the CPU into the cooler. The fans then take the heat and move it away from that area so that the CPU can run at a peak performing temperature so that the CPU can then be overclocked. For the memory, we went with the Corsair LPX DDR4 32GB DRAM that runs at a speed of 2,666 megahertz. If I need to increase the memory in the future, I can do that by simply just buying more memory sticks, but for now, 32 gigabytes has been plenty. The internal drive we decided to go with was the ADATA XPG M.2 512GB SSD. This connects directly to the motherboard, allowing for lightning fast read and write speeds. For the graphics card, we went with the MSI GTX 1080. It's an 8 gig graphics card and this GPU is more than enough for what we need in terms of video editing. After the research we did, it seems that Premiere Pro relies more on the CPU power and not so much on the graphics card or the GPU. 
So that's why we decided to go with the 8 gig GTX 1080 instead of getting a higher end graphics card. To make sure all the parts within the computer are receiving enough power, we went with the EVGA 650 power supply. This power supply isn't the highest end, but it's also not the lowest end, so it is just the right spot and price to provide more than enough power for what each piece needs. And finally, we bought just a simple basic Wi-Fi card so that we can get internet on the machine. After I put the PC together and we had everything installed up and running, I tested it a few times and the first thing I noticed was that I did not need to create proxies. These are types of files that you export that are lower quality than the original versions. And that allows you to reference the lower quality proxy files so that when you're editing in real time, it plays back without lagging. However, it takes a long time to export all of the original footage and turn them into proxies. The fact that I don't need to create proxies anymore when working with even H.265 4K footage with LUTs is incredible. I used to have to export the footage all night, it would take like 10 or 12 hours depending on the size of the project, to create these proxy files before I could start editing. So again, this is like 10 or 12 hours I'm saving on every project right off the bat. After working on a few projects, I can absolutely say that this system is a beast. I haven't experienced any lag at all, and for exporting, it is legit ridiculously faster than my old system. So yeah, now we have two great workstations for editing, and this should save us literally hundreds of hours. Like, it's gonna make the biggest difference in our lives. I definitely could have gone all out and bought some higher end parts, but really it's just not needed and it would have been overkill. Also, I could have spent less than 3000 on each PC, but I wanted something that was a little future proof and not too overkill. So three grand for me was the perfect spot. Okay, so that was a lot of tech talk. I hope you found it helpful. So thanks for watching. Give the video a like if you liked it and subscribe for more videos in the future. And also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you want to have a chance at winning my 4K Light Leaks pack. There's over 200 Light Leaks. If you're interested, again, subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll pick a random winner at the end of the month. All right, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.